Hi there, I'm Sam from Kusin and Kiss. I teach punch needle workshops and I sell kits and supplies for makers. I wanted to make a little video to show one method for making what I call baubles. They're cute little decorations. I first started making them when I wanted to use up a leftover piece of monk's cloth. They don't take too much. You can raid your stash for whatever little pieces of yarn you have left over from other projects. And they're really versatile. Uh, you can make them into brooches or necklaces. You can use them to decorate gifts. And they make great um, garlands for holidays or a child's room. And of course, the thing that's really taken off and that I love making this time of year are Christmas decorations. If you are new to Punch Needle, you might want to go and have a look at my four tools and four rules video first. That'll give you a good grounding in the basics, and then you can come back and make punch needle baubles with us. This is a little display board that Barry and I take to markets to show people what comes in their bobble kits and to show them the steps they'll take to make them. The first step in making a bobble is to take a no-slip hoop uh, and put in your monk's cloth. This one is a four inch hoop. It's going to make a three inch bobble and I like to use a six inch piece of monk's cloth. Now you can probably use scraps or leftover pieces that aren't exactly six by six, but you can play around with what you have. Once it's securely in your hoop, you are going to attach whatever your pattern is to the back, hold it up to a light source, whether that's a lamp or a window, and draw your pattern on the monk's cloth. Once you're ready, you can go ahead and punch your design. Make sure that all of your tails are pushed or pulled through to the back of your piece. Once you're finished punching, take your monk's cloth out of the no-slip hoop and Cut a hem around the outside, probably about a one to one and a quarter inch hem will do. Turn the piece over and cut off all the tails from the back. You don't have to be too precise about this. All of this fluffiness is going to be inside your finished bobble and will add to the cushioned effect. Using a basic in and out type of a stitch, sometimes called a basting stitch or a running stitch, you're going to go in and out in a circle around your punched piece. Give yourself two long tails because you're going to be pulling these up at the end to cinch everything in. I've used red thread here just so that you can see, but normally I would use some kind of a medium gray or medium brown. Cinch everything together so that you've got a dumpling shape with your piece. It can be quite a bit tighter than you think it's going to be because when you go to put your backing on, it's going to flatten it out a bit. Once you've uh, pulled your thread, you've cinched it in and made a little dumpling, be sure it's tied off well. And at this point, if you want to add a hanger, this is when you would sew it onto the back of your piece. I use a six inch piece of wool or yarn uh, folded over and just simply um, stitched onto the back, make sure it's attached really well. The next step is to put the backing on your bobble. My bobbles are made on a four inch uh, no slip hoop and it gives me a three inch bobble. So I want to cut my pieces of backing fabric. In this case, this is a glittery felt, but you can use anything 
um, any type of felt is great because then you don't have to deal with hems, you know, but it can be leather or whatever you have around that doesn't need to have a hem on it. I like to use clips to attach it to the back of the bobble. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about the pins. Pins are a bit fiddly with something this small. If you've got the clips, they're really nice to use. The sewing of the backing on the bobble is going to be done using a very simple whip stitch. Whereas the stitch that we used to cinch it up was an in and out type of stitch, whip stitching is an around and around type of a stitch. Also very simple. And you can make it as large or small as you think is aesthetically pleasing. I tend to make mine somewhere around um, one inch between each stitch. And once you've finished stitching your backing on, your bobble is complete. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you'll give bobble making a try. If you do and you'd like to tag me on Instagram, I'd love to see your projects. Please follow me on YouTube. We'll be making more videos in the months ahead. Happy punching!